The introduction of Satoru Gojo is quite the interesting one. A man likely in his late 20s or early 30s with an unrivaled power that many would rather stay hidden forever than let the air that Gojo exhales touch them. Gojo is introduced to us in the series of Jujutsu Kaisen to be the teachers or sensei to three first year grade fourth two sorcerers earlier on going by the names Yuji Itadori, Megumi Fushigoro or Zenin, and finally Nobara Kugisaki. Each of these characters would get their own video as they are really, really very interesting characters to look into as well. Gojo is a one-man family as he is the only member left. A man when he was born, the freedom of many was taken away simply because of the fact he is too powerful that he forced curses to increase in strength, everyone got stronger. It is described as events of breaking almost unbreakable records, which includes other strong clan members and courses such as Ryoman Sukuna, or member of the Gojo family that also had the six eyes and limitless, which I will talk about while breaking down his power. His powers created new standards of how great both sorcerers and courses could strive for. In other words, when Satoru Gojo was born, the balance of what the world was altered in a way that his existence created the rules. And without a Gojo who has saved many sorcerers that will help in the Jujutsu evolution, which Gojo aspires to change by getting rid of the top tiers. For example, we have Itadori Yuji. Now, without a Gojo, then cursed, cursed users and cursed spirits can do as they please and the balance of power will collapse. Now, Gojo's behavior towards fights, enemies, and overall day activities is actually very pleasant to see. He's actually a really chill dude that seems to have little to no worries. Maybe it's because of how strong he is, as Geto did ask him if he was tr the strongest because he is Gojo Satoru, or if he is Gojo Satoru because he is the strongest. And I will speak on Geto because he is very intriguing both as a life in dead. Now, Gojo may just be very calm because he controls the game and there really isn't anyone to contend with him except Ryo Sukuna. And likely Yuta or Kotsu, but Yuta won't fight him and Sukuna wouldn't risk getting killed as well for no reason. Gojo plays around with his opponents simply for the fact that apart from the fact he is very strong, he literally can just outhack everyone easily and mock them for being weak. Like he did to Jogo, who was as strong as 8 Sukuna fingers, and the gap between each finger is actually exponentially large, possibly worse than Black Flash exponential increase, which I will speak on in my Itadori video. Well, Gojo simply is a man without much stress, pretty carefree and very disrespectful in a very calm way. Gojo does take priority in his students, be it they could potentially be his enemy based on origin or fates, which I think him and Megumi have. Or Megumi's father being his strongest enemy for years known as the social killer Toji Fushiguro Zenin. Or Itadori gradually catching up as he can now fight and beat the likes of Mahito brawl with Yuta, but I doubt Yuta was trying, but Yuta, but you could make the arguments or the case otherwise because Yuta resulted in using course technique to kill Itadori, then revived him. And Itadori as a character really is in depth. Now, all this may seem like a summary of Goji's behavior, but I still would like to go down on him and some of the things aforementioned. Gojo does accept he has a lousy character, which is very true for the most part, and truly he is in the teacher type, but has a dream. A dream to reset the crappy Jujutsu world, which the higher ups have messed up with their idiotic behaviors and judgment, uh, judgment for years, and it is easy for him to just kill everyone who is in charge, but someone else would just take over the transmigrated rules and behaviors of the previous leaders who see their right
right now and nothing would change. The only reason he teaches at Jiu-Jitsu High is to recruit students who would someday be as strong and intelligent allies, which he has to lead by fostering them. To so someday outrank him, especially Hakari and Yuta. Also, is really happy at the fact that Yuji wants to become the strongest, and he does indeed think Yuji is no exception to that. Now, Gojo seems to be really into the development of a world he really doesn't fit into, but he also indeed does fit. Many people make the argument of him not having a place in the world in terms of normalcy, but also having a place in terms of him being Satoru Gojo. Which goes back to the point I made of Ghetto asking him the premise of who or what he is. Gojo really just wants a world where either he can keep everything in a state of normalcy, which is being the pinnacle of power, by taking away the room of others to develop, but also he isn't under the state where he can just do that, that's by the fact he actually could, as even Ghetto does state that, for someone as powerful as him, Gojo could literally kill everyone or enforce his ideals. But Gojo knows that he can't live forever and the system would continue from where the higher up stopped. And him taking over by making things worse through authoritarian rule, even his mere existence caused such without him doing such. Gojo in these aspects is a Sukuna without the intent to just rule over people. While I would say he is like Toji Fushiguro, but without a place in the world, but a place at the same time fitting under the category of being someone who could rule over others, but, the ch but he chooses not to because of his insane strength. The relationship between Gojo, Sukuna and Toji basically is one thing, their birthright, living cheat codes. Toji is a man without any coarsed energy, like actual zero, but so strong that courses fear him. Sukuna is the king of courses, a living coarse object itself. Gojo was born with the ability to subdue others by existing. The similarities between them is that they are all ruthless and actually very wicked and cocky. They just have different motives. And Gojo's motive is to create a world that can be of balance. And the stronger the courses are, then the stronger the youths have to get. As of now, almost every first year and second year are almost grade 1 or special grade easily. Meaning that Gojo would eventually even get surpassed by the likes of Kukisaki if she still kept alive, spoiler alert, within a matter of a matter of few times. And they learn incredibly fast, especially Yuji. Note that in my Sukuna and Toji video, I will fully explain this parallel concept of these three characters. Now, speaking of Gojo as a teacher, Gojo is very irresponsible and speeds up learning process of his students, especially the fast learners as he did with Itadori. And actually, Gojo isn't respected in terms of mature behavior, but no one would dare anger him. The, um, the dude is actually ruthless, you can see it in his eyes, and playful motives. He is basically an extroverted Toji. I would have loved to go over Gojo as a teen deeply, but it is pretty obvious the difference between both of them is actually the fact that Gojo never really cared much for nothing but himself, without a clear motive like munitions, where he would even use up his energy, he was still learning to control them. Gojo just didn't accept the killing of people like Ghetto did, which later resulted in Gojo killing Ghetto. But before then, his entire resolve changed when the higher ups couldn't do anything about Ghetto's actions. As Gojo asks him if he is strong, but he is full of himself. Gojo realizes he can only save those that want to be saved, as he can't alone save the world, but can actually destroy it. In his fight with Toji is when Gojo finally realizes he has a lot to learn. Gojo then comes to, the re to this realization of him alone being the strongest as throughout the heavens and earth. Him alone is the honored one. Gojo then starts to control his powers while severely weakened, as he was worn out prior to such, plus taking near-death damages to the heart, throat, and body. 
Now, let's go over Gojo's techniques and then how strong he actually is. Well, let's start with Limitless. Limitless has divergence and convergence. Almost every ability in Jujutsu Kaisen has that. Limitless as divergence basically creates a distance between him and his opponent like convergence, but the difference is that his opponent would have to reach the starting point of his infinity, and no matter how far they catch up, he will always be ahead, which is basically a chilies and the tortoise. That's why the opponent can't get close to him. While convergence of limitless is basically an infinite series and as things get to him, they slow down because more infinite possibilities are created out of the positive and negative integers, which created impossible possibilities of things existing, right? No matter what you won't, no matter what you won't catch up to him or increase in movement because possibilities of you not getting closer is an infinite set. Reverse cross technique red. This is a technique born from infinity and reversal cross technique inside him, giving birth to a very powerful cross technique. Forward cross technique laps blue, which is like con like a convergence of red. They're combining these two techniques to cause an explosion of imaginary mass to give hollow purple, like a fucking black hole. The six eyes allows Gojo to see through any abilities as they function as, and the next set of actions, like an all-seeing eye. Finally, Yohiki Tenkai. Gojo is strong enough to use domain exp um, expansion multiple times a day and open it as fast as 0.2 seconds which is insane concerning his domain expansion is an unlimited void at Hohikusho with unlimited information and actions you can see everything but can't do anything because your mind can't perceive sets of infinity the letter A is an infinite it's infinite, so for even each sentence you, t you think of creates infinite sets which can get really overpowered, but this technique is an infinite three-dimensional feat as long as I am concerned. And that is like trying my best not to think of it in a transfinite sense. I, I could argue it a lot higher than that, but logically speaking, that's the max I think it could go. Both divergence and convergence of limitless Gojo's domain is like combining them both as a void, but Gojo could scale as far as low multiversal and as low as small city level, and way more when I get into the scaling of Sukuna and Itador. Now, I intentionally left out the Shibuya incidents because really it is almost pointless talking about. Gojo was just restricted from his element and couldn't really do much because of the citizens around him, which he definitely had to protect. Gojo couldn't even really use the main expansion, but he did it in 0.2 seconds. Just to show how impressive this guy is, and he still killed Hanami casually and bullied the rest of those cars. They were literally running away or they would have all been dead including the dude um, who took over to um, Ghetto's body. I can't remember his name. Now, a lot of you guys will be wondering why I didn't explain how he is low multiversal or even far below that. I did, but not everyone is competent enough. They need just breaking down of things. Because I have too many versus matchups of him coming and would want to do that there. And it is really simple to get him that far and it's really hard to even place him below that because even across the universe, him and only him is the honored one. Gojo is quite very impressive. I can only scale him existentially but not inherently, inherently fit wise. But Gojo can also stay in a place time doesn't flow which could get to inaccessible speeds as he can view infinite sets of information aka transfinite in 0.2 seconds by opening a void which is an infinite speed feat. Well that's it for now, um, tune in, subscribe to the channel and yeah remember you press subscribe is not just for Jujutsu Kaisen, this is an all fictional channel, if you like comics, you like manga, anime, reviews, character analysis of both comic and manga characters, well, yep, yeah, this is the channel for you. Um, if you like what you see, subscribe, share this video, and, well, see you all next time. Peace.